Color cardstock, Manila tag. I'll talk a little bit about the wood grain cardstock, which is also uh, something fun. Now, these Distress Crayons, they are available in 18 colors. Now, three sets. And what's nice about these unique sets is we have a bright set for people that love a bright palette, more of an earth tone set, and of course, a vintage set. These are a water reactive pigment, and what's interesting about this show is a lot of people are always trying to compare these to what's out there. I hear a lot of that in the show. Are these like a, are these like a, they're like thick. They're not. And Christina was part of the designer challenge as well. They have similarities of a lot of those things, but at the end of the day, they are their own unique thing because of their properties. They have very smooth consistency, almost like a lipstick or coloring with a stick of butter. When you go across the surface, they slide and smooth across the surface on watercolor cardstock, manila, um, even light or dark surfaces. I think using that birthday card. Someone gave me a birthday card. I colored on the envelope because it's black. Oh. <laughs> so I keep demoing on it. I'm like, I'll leave that in there. Um, but even on something dark like a substrate sheet, this is a new um, paper that's flexible paper that we did with Advantis. It's very thick paper because um, we no longer carry grunge. So this is kind of the answer. It comes in white, craft, uh, and this chocolate brown. What's nice about a pigment is that I can use it on any surface, multiple surface. But when you're watercoloring, it's very different. So if I scribble this and I have a small amount of pigment on the surface versus a large amount of pigment, how this blends with water or reacts is a little different. If I go with my brush, I can certainly get this pigment to react on any surface, whether it's a manila tag or something dark. But on watercolor paper, the less pigment that's on there, the less play you have. Versus something like this, where I have a lot of pigment, that's going to give me the most play. So it's a little backwards compared to how we use a marker. A marker, you kind of want a little bit of color and pull that in. This, because I have uh, more color, is going to give me a larger play. So people that have colored with them, they find that it's much easier to add some color to the edge and pull that in. Or of course, if you're a palette color, you can simply scribble them on any surface to create that palette and you can pick up your color because you'll see that that pigment dissolves right away and it allows you to go into color. All right, let's talk about mixing some colors. You can mix these as well. So these give you the ability that if I'm going to put them onto a surface, I can color them on a surface. If you need more color, you simply twist the bottom. It's going to expand. And I can mix this and I'm never going to contaminate this particular stick. I can use my water brush to pull out some color. I can go in and pull out this color. Or I can mix to create an entirely new color. Okay, depending on how you want to blend these. Now when we're working with these as a, as a watercolor, their reactive property really depends on how you choose to blend them. So, for example, I'm going to go onto this wood grain cardstock. I'll take this. And I'm just going to kind of scribble this right over the top. This is the 111-pound cardstock. It's going to allow me to smudge this in. So you can create some really cool effects because of the dryness of this crayon. I'm able to hit those high points, but I also have the ability to smudge this out with my finger. So I can go in and ink or paint this. If you're using it on a surface and you want to create that kind of smudge factor, it does give you the ability to smudge it as soon as you apply it. These, believe it or not, do dry. So unlike an oil pastel that doesn't dry, this will dry on the surface, like these are dry, which means when I touch it, it's not going to continue to smudge. But as far as their water reactive properties, that's also really different. For example, if I put this medium on paper, we know with most distressed things that when we spray water on it, it's going to react, it's going to wick. These do not. The only way you'll get this to really wick and move is by going in with your finger and move that around. So it's nice that if I'm doing some mixed media projects, even though I get it wet, it's not necessarily going to go fugitive. It's going to allow you to pull in or feather in however much color you want, depending on how you pull that water. And because of that reason, it does not allow you to stamp with these. Most uh, water-based pigments allow you to color onto a stamp, spray it with water, and stamp with it. It won't release from the stamp because it's not designed to. And the reason I designed it that way because let's say, for example, I watercolored this. Well, we can still see that there's water on the paper, so let me just dry it. It's not the fact that I have to heat set this medium at all because it will always react with water, but I just want to dry the surface just to show you what we can do with it. 
it was important that anything that I add to the line, I'm able to always go back and incorporate a new product with what already exists in the line. And in this case, we're dealing with Distress Ink or Stain or Spray Stain. So let's show, for example, that we have this watercolor. Here I'll take some Distress Ink. Let me take a blending tool. Can I really not get out a single blending tool? We distracted you a little bit. Yes, they're, all, they're everywhere. Um, so here I'll take some Distress Ink. I'm just going with something dark and disturbing, like brown. And I'm going to blend over this. And the reason I want to blend over this is just to show you that even though I'm blending with the blending tool, it's not smudging this. You saw me smudge that medium, but they have a drying time. So once they're dry, you do have the ability to go over them, whether you're touching them or inking them, and they're not going to smudge everywhere. Another thing that I like is it does have a resist quality to it, where one, we can see that it's resisting, but it even gets better because let's say, for example, I watercolored with this, 100% watercolored with it, and I decided that I wanted to do a, a wash of color, a di totally different color, whether it was watercolor, distress, or spray stain. When I wet this, it's going to react and it's going to pull my ink away from everything that I just colored, even where I watercolor. So if I do a spray stain or I do a, that wash of watercolor, my color is going to come right back to the surface and it's going to bring up that vibrant quality. Now, if I touch this, it's going to react, right? So as long as you're not touching it or going over with a brush, you can still create these really cool resist effects and that was the main reason why I didn't want it stampable. So if you sprayed it on your stamp and you drug your stamp down the paper, sure it would come off, but just touching it is not enough to get it to remove because I didn't want it to do that. So that's some of the, the big features of it. But let's talk about a, an untreated, uh, I'm sorry, a treated surface like a collage medium or gesso. If you have worked with untreated paper like a cardstock or manila, you can see that it's got some great play and blending qualities. But when we're working on something that's got some type of coating, that's really fun. Just dry this. So once a medium is dry, oh, there's still a little bit there. That'll be the place that I get crying on to. Once a surface is dry, whether it's got some type of uh, seal over the top, it gives me a chance to really expand the play time of this. We've certainly been able to blend in watercolor, but when we get into areas like this, we've got a significant amount of open time on something coated. So let's go in with our crayons and just add some color. Carefully add some color. Boy, could they be any louder. Could you imagine Hero Arts booth? I feel so bad for them. Wow. <laughs> well, maybe they can start hammering over there too. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So here I'm just going to add some of those colors. You don't have to cap these right away. I've just been in the habit because I keep laying stuff over the top of them. Um, so I'm just going to add some color. And let's start blending this out. Now, I'm just going to go in and start smudging this. Now what's nice is of course if I use the same little smudge tool, I can blend those colors or I can just change that to stay true to that color. I love that your finger is a smudge tool. It is. It's a nice <laughs> smudge tool. And you have many of them, but sometimes you'll run out depending on your palette. You have to kind of look back <laughs> to see yeah, which one am I using for which colors. And if you're ambidextrous. Yeah. But if you, and if you wanted to move this even more, you know, keep in mind that when you're working with this, it's water reactive. So if you want, you know, a lighter blend of color, you can definitely go in and just wet your finger and see how I can smooth that out even more or get more blend. So you don't necessarily need to spray the surface. You just need to work uh, just with your finger a little different. And here I'm just going to keep adding some color. Of course, I'm going to go in with brown. It's just what I do. Um, I want to show you some different ways that we can change and alter our background. And when you're smudging this, I'm not adding a lot of pressure to this. We have a great make and take in the back. If you haven't done it, I really recommend doing it because it gives you a chance to test drive these and see how they work. Let's go in with some brown. I'm just going to add some uh, shadow around some of these ephemera pieces. I'm just going to take that. Now what I like about this medium is, let's say for example here I don't have any color. It's soft enough that it's allowed me to go in and fill in that area with my medium. So I do love that. And I want to talk about this, because sometimes you might get a little too much, like I believe I did. I think that's a little too grungy over there. Water reactive. So if I want to remove some color, because this is coated, 
I can remove some of that color just using a baby wipe. Which brings me to the next technique. Once I work with this, regardless of drying time, it will always be water reactive. Okay? I already told you that when it dries, it's not going to be smudgy. And right now when I touch this, it has kind of a light waxy feel because I know that these are still wet. Meaning I can still go with my finger alone and smudge this. What I can do, whether it's this stage or whether it's completely dry, is go in and add some really great layering effects. I'm going to take a layering stencil. These are the new mini layering stencils. These are a smaller size than the big stencils. Much smaller in size, all the same designs, but a much smaller scale. And these are really great for cards and different backgrounds, but this is going to allow me to take a stencil, just take a baby wipe, just going to go in and just start wiping some of that off just to create a cool background effect and you can use any designs or styles that you want we want to use some dots maybe we'll use some bubble wrap Ooh, what to do what to do we can use some dot fade So because this is water reactive, just going over this with a baby wipe, I can clean off as much of that pigment as I want from my surface just to create a cool mixed media background. Let's say I didn't like something. If you're like, you know what, I don't like how this looks, I can clean off all of my color if I want to. Because I've treated that surface, right? As long as I've got that collage medium on there, it does give me the ability to lift this off. But unlike an oil